This is Math 141, Section 1 1.9, and we are going to talk about uh, circles and ways to write equations that represent them. And um, there is a, a definition for circles that's what's called a, a locus of points. A locus is in like collection um, of points definition. And it would be um, a circle, you could think of it as a collection of points. Uh, that are equidistant from a given point. And that given point is the center of the circle. And equidistant, uh, like it sounds, means equal distant. So if you take all the points that are uh, equidistant or a given point from a center, you get a circle. So we could uh, start with some point, there's our center, and then I'm just going to use this tool and, and trace it. So I can fix that at the center, or so, approximately at the center. Squeeze it up a little bit. And notice that like every point that's out here, that radius that's coming out, it was always the same length. Like this is the same length. So every point that's along here uh, and I know you've seen this before, is equidistant from that from that center. So if I measure this distance here, it's going to be the same as if I measure this distance here, or if I measure this distance here, whatever direction I go. The distance from the center to the edge of the shape, which is a circle, is a constant. These are all the same length. So let's... Uh, think about that a little bit let's make this this length here five and I think that I'm gonna peek at some graph paper here and so I have some point right here and let's let's graph it so this is Y and this is X and I want uh, every point that I can get that's five away from here so um, from that center zero zero one two three four five there's one right there one two three four five there's one there one two three four five there's one there one two three four five there's one there as well and um, let's see I think that that distance right there that lands on that lattice point I think that that's five as well. And the reason I think it's five is I can make a right triangle. Like I can use Pythagorean theorem, right? This side is three long. This side is four long. Uh, three squared plus four squared is, is five squared. So that means that that must be, that must be five long using Pythagorean theorem. And I guess I could get some other points on this circle using that three, four, five lattice points, right? By lattice points, I mean points that, that meet on the intersection of the, of the grid. So if I could go over three and up four, one, two, three, four as well, or back three, one, two, three, up four, one, two, three, four, back four, up three, etc. Oh. You see how I can kind of start to get a decent circle traced out here then using those one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, ah, ha ha. That's why that didn't look good. Not just because I can't draw. So I know that, um, like I got these lattice points, but I have a bunch of points, other points on here that aren't lattice points. So for example, that point right there, if I want the coordinates of that point. Well, I know that if I think about this in, in Pythagorean theorem terms, I have some, some distance this way, which is X, and some distance this way, which is Y. And I know that that has to be that distance is supposed to be five, no matter what direction I go. So any point on here, any point that's on this circle, I can generalize it as x, y. And the way that I know x and y relate to each other has to be the way 
that the Pythagorean theorem would relate in order to make my right triangle to guarantee that, that distance right there is 5. So I think that uh, x squared plus y squared equals 5 squared equals 25 is an equation for this circle. Because you see, any point that's xy that's on here, x squared plus y squared has to equal 5 squared because it makes a right triangle. I have all these right triangles that make this circle. That's fantastic. That gives me uh, a pretty uh, decent amount of power. So for example, here I have it. I have a graph right here, x squared plus y squared equals 5, and I have all these, all these points on here. I'm sorry, equals 25, and I have all these points on here. It equals 5 squared. Um, so if I wanted a radius of, of 3, say, I would make this a 3 squared. So I'd make this a 9. See how it comes out 3. I know that it, from that center 0, 0, 3 in both directions, and any line that's here is going to be 3 long as well, because x squared plus y squared equals 9, equals 3 squared. Um, again, I just want to really emphasize that point that... Um, anything that's on here, I have some x value and some y value, right? This is the point x, y. This distance, if this distance is 3, I know that this squared plus this squared must equal 3 squared. x squared plus y squared equals 3 squared, or I can just write that as uh, simply as a 9. Great. So there's there's that. I, I know where the center is. I know how I can um, make that change, right? And this doesn't have to be a perfect square. Like, I could make this a 7. And this length from here to here, then, would be the square root of 7. Let's see, 2.646 is how long that would be. Square root of 7. Let me just, let me just check that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, rounds out to that. So no matter what I make this, the radius is going to be the square root of it. So I have the start of a, of a good equation here. I know that the equation of a circle, um, one thing that's, that's going on is that x squared plus y squared must equal r squared, or the, or the radius squared. And that's if I have a circle. My center is at 0, 0, and my radius, my radius is that, that equidistant part, is r. Boy, that is, we'll pretend like that's the center. But not every circle has to have a center at, at 0, 0. So let's, uh, let's mess around with this a little bit. If I had something like, um, instead of just squaring x, I'm going to go x um, minus 3 squared. Notice what's happened. It, it shifted it, um, and let's let's make this a nine again, just so I have those nice that radius of three. So this minus three in here, what this has done is this has shifted it over three places. And how about if I do this? Uh, y, I'll do this uh, plus two. Ha! That shifted it down two. So that's a little interesting. I'm going to grab these and, and draw on them a little bit. And looking at this, I can find the center if I can have those uh, those cross points like there, like that and like that. There's my center right there. And my center is at the point 3, negative 2. Now there's a couple ways for us to uh, to interpret this. And one of them is this x minus 3 has shifted it right 3. This x plus 2 has shifted it down 2. Um, some folks like to think, what makes this a 0? What makes this a 0? Positive 3, negative 2. Positive 3, there's my center. Um, but I want to think about if I have a point on the edge here, x, y, I know that distance is 3. I can see it right there. And so let's think about actually deriving this, this formula from this. So I pick some arbitrary point on the edge, x, y. And I know that I'm going to take advantage of Pythagorean theorem. So if I come straight down and straight across, um, I have this, 
I have this. So now let's think about what those distances are, like how long this side is and how long this side is. And what I can do is I'm just going to take this side that's right here. So just this right here. This is just a change in the x direction. Right? So I want it starts here at 3 and it goes all the way over to x. So if this is 3 and this is at x. So if I want to know how long this is, notice I could just go like if this was a 5 and this was a 3, 5 minus 3 is 2, that would be too long. Right? If my point was right here. But uh if this was a Four. Four minus three is one. This would be one long. So the distance of this is x minus three. So this side is x minus three long because it's a change in x from three to x, x minus three. Similarly, this distance that's right, that's equivalent to this, if I just pop this out, this is a change in y. And notice it starts at this negative two height and it goes all the way up to, we're just calling it y. The length of it, uh, I can make the same argument. The length of this is, is y minus 2. Because if I want to know how long uh, this side right here is, like let's say that this was, was up here at 1. How far is it from 1 to negative 2? 1 minus negative 2 is 3. It's 3 long. So this distance is y minus 2. And then from there, it's just Pythagorean theorem, because notice I have uh, x minus 3 y minus 2, and that distance is 3. So if I use Pythagorean theorem, uh, one of the legs squared plus the other leg squared is the hypotenuse squared, which is exactly the equation that I have right there. So now I have a, a general equation for circles, which is just basically all the right triangles I can possibly get given that uh, in two dimensions given that ra that is my radius squared. Like this is everything in here, I could think of it as just a bunch of right triangles. This is every possible right triangle we could get from that point that has a radius of three. So circles are just a bunch of triangles. This is one way to think about circles. Let's generalize this then. So that was my center at zero, zero, but now I'm gonna throw my center uh, at H I'm going to call it HK, and that's just uh, that's just tradition. So my center is at HK, and I'm going to have some circle. Pretend like that's a circle, and it has some radius R. So my my equation for it is going to be uh, x minus h, x minus the x part squared, plus y minus k equals the radius squared. Right there, I have my general. Um, general equation for for a circle. So if I told you that uh, I wanted you to sketch a graph and that graph was going to be do x minus 5 squared plus uh, y plus 3 squared equals 25. Well first off I know that my center will be at what makes this a zero? Positive five. What makes this a zero? Negative three. And I know my radius would be five. So I could graph that and actually sketching it, I'm just gonna say like, here's my point five, negative three. You know, I could put in my, my axes later whenever I want. If my radius is five, from here I can go five in every direction. So I'll go up five, down five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Left five, right five from that center. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. If I wanted to sketch a couple more points, I could to be try and be really accurate, or I could just try and freehand it. And since we all can imagine what a circle looks like, that's that's a good enough drawing. So there's a there's a good graph of it. So what I want to do now is go the other direction. So I'm going to show you a uh, a circle here in a moment, and then we will. Um, We'll try and write an equation for it. So here's a circle, and I'm going to try and um, write an equation for it. So first off, let's find that center. So it looks like I've got some, it's nice to label lattice points as you find them. Remember lattice points are the points where 
uh, the shape intersects the graph on a corner. It has integer values for the points. Um, so I've got this, and actually this helps me find my center pretty good because there's these two hone in that on that center. So it looks like my center is at 5, 1. So, so far, I know my equation is going to be uh, x minus 5 squared plus uh, y plus 1 squared. Nope, minus 1. And now all I have to do, worry about is what the radius is. And actually, this is nice. It goes right to the edge right here. So 1, 2, 3. The radius is 3. So this is a 3 squared. That's where that came from, 9. There's my equation for it. And if I wasn't sure, I could I could check it in Desmos or um, or I could maybe plug in some points. Like here's the point five four. Plug it in and see if that works. See if that gives you nine. And it does because what's nice is the five. This would be five minus five squared plus four minus one squared. This is a zero. This is a three. Yeah, three squared equals nine. Check. And you can check some other points on it make sure it works. All right, I have another example for circles here coming up. So same sort of idea. Let's find some lattice points here. Here's one. Got a few of them. You know, and it, I can see the centers here. If you can't see the center, if you have lattice points directly across from them, connect them. That'll intersect with the center. And so ooh, here we go. This is the point negative 2, 4. So my center is at negative 2, 4. So I know I'll have x uh, plus 2, because negative 2 makes a 0 in that, plus just Pythagorean theorem, so y minus 4 squared equals and this will be my my radius squared so i have to figure out how long my radius is or at least i have to know what my radius squared distance is so if i just go like this one two like 2.2 2, that's i don't want it exactly 2.2 .2 isn't going to work for me so what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw from the center to one of these lattice points and i'll use pythagorean theorem to, to figure out that that distance so this distance I can see it right here is 2 this distance is 1 so let's see 2 squared plus 1 squared equals r squared 2 squared is 4 1 squared is 1 so 5 equals r squared now you could then say you don't have to do this you could say r is the square root of 5 because that's how that's how long the radius is but the answer that goes here is r squared. So we could just use that 5. So there it is right there. There's our equation for that. And again, if you're, if you're not sure about it, pick a point, plug it in, and, and see if it works. So this is the point, negative 1, 6. Plug it in. See if it gives you 5. Try a couple of them. If they work, you've got the right, you've got the right solution. All right, I want to do one more uh, example. So... I know my center of my circle is at negative 3, 4. And I know, there's my circle, pretend like it's round. But I know one of the points on it, I know that this point is 5, 5. And I want to write an equation for this. So let me start with the center. I know that this is going to have an x plus 3 squared in it, plus y minus 4 squared. Again. The 4 makes 0 with the y, the negative 3 makes 0 with the x. And that's going to equal uh, the radius squared. So now I just have to figure out what the what the radius is. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to do that by uh, by knowing these two points. So I'm going to kind of lift this little part right here out of here. So this is the center's at negative 3, 4. And it comes up here to 5, 5. I could put this on grid paper if I wanted, but I don't think I need to because um, I can just think about there being a right triangle here. And in order to figure out how long that, um, that radius is, or that hypotenuse, 
I'm going to uh, I'm going to think about this. This is not drawn to scale, definitely, but that's all right. I can I can work with my numbers. Uh, this up down motion right here, that's that's my change in y. Delta y delta means change in. So it started at four and went up to five, right? From four to five. I know that's one long. Five minus four is one. So this distance is one. Uh, this distance here, this is this is my change in x. I can get it uh, similarly by looking at these x values. Um, this x is negative 3, and it goes all the way over to 5. So from negative 3 to 5, I know that that's 8. If I don't know that that's 8, I can just go x minus x. So 5 minus negative 3 is 8. So this distance is 8 long. So again, not drawn to scale, <laughs> but drawn at least. So over 8, up 1. Pythagorean theorem would then would tell me that 8 squared plus 1 squared equals, I'm going to call that r still, r squared. So 64 plus 1 is 65. So this distance is the square root of 65, but I don't need that distance. I need it squared to write the equation. So there it is right there. And if you weren't feeling too sure about it, plug in the fives. You know, plug in this point. And that, that'll make it equal 65. All right, so in practice, I'm going to ask you to sketch a couple. I'm going to ask you to uh, find equations um, of circles as well, given some information like this. Message me if you have any questions. Post stuff in the forum.